What is up, peoples? Welcome back to another video. My name's D'Angelo, and in today's video, we are going to talk about sensor resolution for your camera. So, jumping right into it, let's talk about what resolution is. So, when people mention resolution, they are mentioning, you know, the number of pixels that exist within the image. So, for example, standard definition is 720 by 480 pixels. That is measured by the width compared to the height of the resolution. So there are 720 pixels. There are 720 pixels going across horizontally, and then there are 480 pixels going vertically. That makes up standard definition. Now, original high definition, this is 720p for whenever you're on YouTube and you click that 720p, that's what it is. It is 1280 pixels, that's 1280 going horizontal, by 720 going vertical. And um, it has more information, it has more depth, it has more detail than standard definition. So continuing that trend, it is full high definition. Full high definition, as also known as full HD, that is 1080p. That is what you see when you play video games, when you watch movies, when you watch TV. Whenever you see something that's advertised as full HD, that is what they're talking about. And that is 1920 pixels going horizontal. That's 1,920 pixels horizontal and 1080. So 1,080 pixels going vertical. And that is full HD. So that's what we're used to seeing. But as we move up into the higher resolutions, as we move into the movies, uh, stuff like that, they come up to higher resolutions like 2K. 2K is 2048 horizontal by 1080. So it's a little bit wider than full HD. So you get a little bit more detail. Um, they call this, it's usually measured by the uh, horizontal level, so or by the horizontal scale. So if, so as they say, 1080 is full HD, and 2K is because it's 2,000 pixels wide. Um, ultra high definition, let's just keep cranking it up. Ultra high definition 4K, also known as UHD 4K, is 3840 pixels wide. They call it 4K, but it's not really 4K because it doesn't have those 4,000 pixels. But they call it ultra high definition to get around this. They're basically upscaling it. So even though it's not real 4K, they call it 4K because it's close. And that is 3840 wide by 2160 tall. And the next step up is true 4K. This is what people talk about when they say 4K that isn't ultra high definition. If they're not saying ultra high definition, they're talking true 4K. And that is 4,096 pixels wide by 2160 tall. And that is true 4K. So when you see, you know, they record 4K internally, TVs are promoted as, you know, true 4K, that is what they're talking about when it comes to pixel ranges. Next step up from that, just keeps going higher and higher, is 5K, and 5K is 5120 horizontal by 2700 vertical. That is insane amount of pixel density. That's like, what, like three, no. If 4K is four times the size of 1080, then 5K is like, what, five times, 4.5 times, something like that. I'm not good at math, but it's up there. And it is, if you can record in 5K, and you have the you know the the, um, the resources to actually edit it and play it back and watch it and do all this good stuff. Do it. It'll only benefit you in the long run. And you know I'm gonna go into that more so at the end of this page or at the end of this uh, video. But stay with me here. Next step up is 6K, and that is 6144 horizontal by 3160 vertical. And you know. It just keeps going up. If the highest you can record comfortably, go for it. Next step up is ultra high definition 8K. Now, just like ultra high definition 4K, it's not true 8K in the sense that it doesn't actually have 8,000 pixels horizontal, but 
it's close. So it is 7680, so 7680 pixels wide and 4320 pixels, so 4320 pixels tall. And that, as with all the higher resolutions, is better than the ones that came before it. So true 8K, also known as just plain, you know, plain old 8K, is 8192 pixels wide by 4320 pixels tall. 4320 pixels tall. That is in insane amount of resolution and the only real cameras that can handle that right now are some of the red cameras and you know uh photo keen is coming out soon or photo keen is coming up soon um i think it's ibc is coming up soon so there's going to be a lot of cameras and a lot of new systems introduced um towards the end of the year so you might see a lot more 8k cameras 6k cameras whatnot coming up so keep your eye out for that. And if you want me to cover that, I will. And I will be doing that anyway. So if you want to see it, give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Uh, subscribe so you never miss them. All that good stuff. But there's more. So the cons of higher resolutions. So recording at higher resolutions isn't always the go-to move. It isn't always the great thing to do. And that's because generally it is more expensive to get into higher resolution than, you know, standard definition don't use standard definition then high definition 720p um even 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 4k 4k is kind of cheap nowadays compared to what it was but if you're looking to get into the 2ks the 5ks 6ks you're gonna spend a lot of money you're gonna spend a lot of money in you know just the camera itself so i'm shooting on a 70d a canon 70d it can't shoot 4k sadly you know, that's, I'm sad about that. But if you get the GH4, that can shoot 4K. If you get the newly announced GH5, that can shoot 4K. If you get, you know, Sony A7S, um, A7S Mark II, Sony C series, the C300s, the C100s, they can shoot 4K. But they also have a price tag to match. So the cheapest one out of all those I mentioned were the GH4, and that's roughly around like four, uh, 1,000. It's probably gonna go lower in price now that the GH5 has been announced, but everything else over that is like 1,000 plus, and you're gonna pay for the camera itself. You're gonna pay for the media, so the cards, the, these, I don't know if you can see it, these, these SD cards, you're gonna take up a lot more space when you're shooting 4K. So you're gonna need bigger cards and that's gonna cost more money. Um, more over than that, you're gonna need a better computer to run these large files, to edit them, to play them back, to do everything, to ingest them. You're gonna need more expensive equipment that's more capable than things that can run 4K and things, I mean, things that can run HD. Uh, 720 standard definition you're gonna have to you know kick out some cash if you don't already have that stuff on hand people aren't gonna see it all the time they're not they might not see that quality so you're shooting in 4k you're shooting in 6k but a lot of people don't actually have 4k 6k ready televisions or 6k 4k ready computer monitors so they're not gonna see the quality that you're kicking out to them and you know that's a real con. Unless you're in like the movies and you're in like big projector screens, then you're probably not wasting. You're not wasting your time, but the customer, the consumer, might not notice. So if you're going in it for you know that recognition, just know that you know it might not be coming for a little bit of time. But there are some pros to shooting in ultra high definitions, um, higher definition, six Ks, eight Ks. 4Ks, there are some real pros and, you know, future proofing. Future proofing is a big pro, considering the fact that, you know, there are cameras capable of shooting in 6K, 4K, and above. How long did it take? It took years. It literally years. Like, standard definition to where we're at right now took years. People were happy operating in standard def, 720, full HD for a long time. So, you know, it's going to just get quicker and quicker as the way technology innovates. But for the most part, you won't have to buy a new camera if resolution is all you're looking for. You're not going to have to buy a new camera for a long time. So you're going to be set. Um, moreover, 
people don't upgrade televisions and maybe computer monitors, but people don't upgrade televisions that, that much. You know, 4K is still relatively new and expensive and people are going to pay a lot of money for it. Um, so, you know, when things come down in price, then you'll be more likely to get more people checking out for your 4K images and your 4K stuff, but you might not have to pay too much uh, in the future to continue. Moreover, you have more flexibility in the editing process. So if you're exporting your footage in 1080, but you shot it in 4K, you can reframe. So for example, I'm gonna zoom in on this me right now. The more I zoom in, as you can see, the more I zoom in, the less quality my face becomes. It becomes more blocky, it becomes more rough, um, it becomes unsharp, and that's because I'm zooming into 1080p footage, full HD footage, and you know, there's just not that much detail there. So as I zoom in, the detail that's already there gets lost, and it's just not good. So, but with 4K, you have more detail. You have the ability to, you know, zoom all the way in there and not lose any detail, not make it unsharp, not make it blocky, not make it artifacty, not make it rough. And, you know, that, that right there is one of the key, 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 key benefits to higher resolutions is that you have more room to mess around and do what you need to do. That's more room for... Uh, visual effects, more room for just reframing, just more room for zooming, zooming out, doing what you got to do. It's it's just you have more flexibility. Uh, moreover, it's, you know, marketing. You can, saying that you shot something in 4K sounds better than saying you shot it in full HD. And, you know, there are people who will hire you, who will, you know, do, give you work for saying that you can shoot in high resolution, even if they don't know what they're talking about, even if they don't know that not a lot of people are going to be able to see it, they might give you that work. Trust me, I have heard people talk like this, but if, you know, if this was helpful for you, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe as I post new content every so often pretty much every week. But you know, that's all for this one. My name's D'Angelo. Thank you for rocking with me and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.